Welcome to our lesson on Understanding Performance with Benchmarks and Analytics. In our previous two lessons, we covered the automated customer journey, detailing signup forms and flows, followed by our lesson on campaign strategy and segmentation. It's important to understand how both your campaign and flow emails are performing, as well as signup forms to make informed decisions and refine the approach in your marketing. So we'll be covering the following topics in this lesson. The account dashboard, overview reports, metrics, custom reports, benchmarks, and actions we can take from these insights. Within your Klaviyo account, you'll see on the dashboard you have a performance tab. This can be a useful, quick snapshot to see some performance data. Note the drop down to choose different metrics, which will alter what you see in the performance tab. As you scroll down the page, you can see metrics broken out by your individual flows and campaigns. Additionally, you have the analytics tab on your dashboard. This can be customized to have cards with the data you specifically want to see. However, I often find that the more useful data is found within the analytics tab in the account, which we'll get to shortly. By navigating to different sections within your account, Klaviyo does a nice job of showing associated performance data. These are your overview reports. Going to your signup forms will first indicate the number of submissions and submission rate. Clicking into a given form, you can access further details. You'll see an overview tab, advanced reports tab, and A-B test results tab. The overview is a useful snapshot where you can adjust the time window and see that data. By selecting the Advanced Reports tab, you'll be able to see data on different device types as well as UTM parameters. The A-B testing results, as the name implies, is where you can access all of your test results data. When you navigate to your flows and enter into a given flow, at the top of your screen you'll see a Show Analytics button. By selecting this, you'll see relevant data through the flow. Open rate, click rate, placed order rate, and revenue from each email is indicated. Also, conditional splits will show relevant info on the yeses and noes. Furthermore, by selecting an email box, you can see some more detailed information on the left side. You can dig into that information further still by selecting View All Analytics. Within your campaign section, each campaign will indicate some high-level metrics with an open rate, click rate, and revenue from placed orders. You can alter the conversion metric from placed orders if needed. For instance, you might want to take a look at active on-site data to see how many site visits were generated from your campaigns. By selecting a given campaign, you can see further detailed data on the campaign performance. Let's take a bit of a further look at understanding metrics. Within the Analytics tab from your menu on the left, you will find Metrics, Custom Reports, and Benchmarks. By navigating to Metrics, you can see a list of all the different metrics upon which Klaviyo is set to collect data. There may be additional metrics which will appear with some integrations. However, each metric will have charts which give a line graph visual representation of your metric data, an activity feed which shows timestamped instances of each metric in order to verify who and when any metric activity was logged, cohorts analyze retention and churn, Best People indicates your top performers for a given metric, and the activity map will show the geographic location where any metric activity was logged. Now, I tend to not spend a lot of time within the metrics. However, if there's any question whether an account is logging specific data, this is where I look. For example, whether or not viewed product data is being collected to trigger the browse abandonment flow, the activity feed on the viewed product metric is where I would check. Within the Custom Reports section, you can find five different types of custom reports. A single metric deep dive report, which creates a report on a single metric. A multi-metric report, which creates a report for performance across multiple metrics. Campaign performance report, which analyzes campaign performance across specific metrics. The flows performance report, which creates a detailed report on flow performance and the product performance report, which creates a report on product performance across the full funnel of browsing, checkout, and purchasing. You can choose the specific metrics and data you want on the report and for the relevant time window.
Personally, I find benchmarks to be one of the most beneficial tools in the analytics arsenal. Benchmarks provides a unique analysis from Clavio that takes a lot of the nuances and factors into consideration to provide some truly useful and immediately actionable data. Clavio's data science team has put together this feature that will use some key indices to match your account with a peer group, or that is, accounts similar to yours. First, it's based upon your specific industry vertical, and you may need to adjust the chosen industry within your settings. In order to check this setting, navigate from the dropdown in the top right and select Account. Then choose the Contact tab and then Organization. Scroll down the page and then verify that you have the correct industry selected. Now, within your industry, your peer group is based on percentage of days with campaigns sent, average item value, email revenue percentage, year-over-year -year growth rate, and monthly revenue. From that base level understanding of your industry and particular business model, the Benchmarks tool will show you how you stack up in comparison to your peer group. You can see, plain and simple, if anything is poor, fair, good, and all the way up to excellent. These descriptors are based upon the percentile which accompanies each description of the performance. You can see different views within Benchmarks, navigating across the tabs for overview, business performance, campaigns, SMS, and flows in order to gain specific insights you may want to find. Once you have a clear understanding of your performance data and how you stack up against your competitors, you'll want to act on it and put things in motion to iterate on constant improvements. When considering the performance of your signup forms, it's important to have a fundamental understanding for performance. Most pop-up and fly-out signup forms will have a submission rate between 1 and 3%, but can be higher depending on a number of factors. If you're lower than 1%, you definitely want to address it and make sure nothing is fundamentally flawed in the form. However, no matter where you are performance-wise, always strive to improve. Some aspects to consider for improvement include the following. Make sure your form is optimized for mobile. Maybe have a separate form for mobile altogether. Keep in mind that users will have to type on their phones and have a fundamentally different experience. Also, take a look at your time delay settings. Perhaps you're showing too soon and being a nuisance, or perhaps not soon enough and users don't even have the opportunity to sign up. Maybe you need a separate form specifically geared toward exit intent. All things are worth considering and testing. So always A-B test when you're looking to find more opportunities for improvement. You can test a multitude of factors, copy, imagery, colors, your data fields, virtually all aspects of the form can be tested. For both campaigns and flows, you'll want to consider a number of different factors for your metrics. There are your deliverability metrics, as well as your list growth and engagement metrics. Of course, there is some crossover between the two. We've discussed the implications of deliverability a number of times. The main things that impact it are opens, clicks, spam complaints, bounces, and unsubscribes. Now, unsubscribes, spam complaints, and bounces are maybe some of the lesser understood metrics. However, it's important to, to demystify what you can do to improve them. Being equipped to address them will ensure you know what to do to keep your account healthy. If you see your spam complaint rate at or above 0.08%, it's probably time to take some action. Some of the things that you can do are, first, double check to make sure that your checkout opt-in is not pre-selected by default. This could mean that customers are opting into email marketing without realizing it. Then they start receiving your emails that they didn't expect, resulting in some marking it as spam. Also, make sure your unsubscribe link can be found easily within your emails. If people are unable to opt out of your emails when they want to, they might go so far as to mark it as spam. Double opt-in is enabled by default on your account, and it requires that users verify their email address when they subscribe. Upon signing up, the user receives an automated confirmation email and will need to click the link within the confirmation email in order to be added to a contact list. Single opt-in will create a lesser barrier of entry for users to subscribe by adding them straight away. The trade-off here is that with single opt-in, users can subscribe and be added to a list with an incorrect email address or even a false email address. Within each list, you have the ability to toggle between double or single opt-in within the list settings. Enabling global unsubscribes means that you remove users from every list when they choose to unsubscribe. If you have multiple contact lists where users might be subscribed, enabling this setting within your lists will suppress them altogether. 
Otherwise, it's possible that users who meant to opt out of your emails will remain on a separate list and will still receive some emails. You can update this also within your list settings. Avoiding spammy subject lines seems like a no-brainer, but it does bear mentioning. Make sure your subject lines are compelling and don't seem spammy or like clickbait. Some inbox providers might filter these, or users may just assume them to be spam straight away without opening. And lastly, make sure your emails are rendering for all users. Be sure to test and make sure different browsers, devices, and inbox providers aren't doing anything to compromise your emails. If there is a whole group of users unable to receive your emails properly, that could be a significant problem. There are two different types of bounces that you might experience. Hard bounces are emails that cannot be delivered due to a permanent reason, such as a fake email address which is undeliverable. Klaviyo will automatically suppress a profile that hard bounces. Soft bounces, however, are emails that cannot be delivered due to a temporary reason, such as a full inbox. If an email soft bounces more than seven consecutive times, Klaviyo will automatically suppress this address. You still might have a bounce rate that will reflect poorly on your sending reputation. If you see your balances at or above 0.8%, what can you do? The main thing is to make sure you're emailing legitimate, real, consented contacts. You can do this by keeping your email list cleaned on a regular basis, filtering out a segment of profiles that have received soft bounces, and enabling double opt-in. When you see a significant amount of unsubscribes on your account, that's alarming. A significant amount would be at or above 0.3%. When you see unsubscribes at that level, you'll want to look at the following options to see improvement. Again here, it's important to make sure your Shopify checkout settings do not have the email marketing opt-in pre-selected. Also, send primarily to your engaged segments as this will keep your email list cleaned on a regular basis. Enable global unsubscribes, Make sure the content of your emails matches what users have expected when subscribing, as well as what the subject lines indicate. And lastly, you can use the Manage Preferences page. This allows users to update profile data to indicate how often they would like to be emailed. You can leverage this to form different segments in order to email at different intervals. This way, hopefully you can retain the subscriber if they feel overwhelmed by too many emails. Now that we've covered the deliverability metrics and how to address them, we can now shift our focus to engagement metrics. The primary metrics we look at for engagement are opens, clicks, and revenue. Just to clarify all of these metrics, first, open rate is the number of individuals opening your email divided by the total number of recipients. Click rate is the percentage of people who click the link in your email out of the total number of recipients. This is not to be confused with click-through rate which measures those who clicked your email divided by those who have opened that email. And revenue, I think we all know what that is. The best way to measure your performance on these metrics and find insight for clear areas of opportunity is to utilize your benchmarks. You'll be able to see the general health breakdown in order for you to hone in on the areas for improvement. The biggest battle is knowing where to focus, but Clavio's made it really simple through benchmarks. Next is knowing what to do with that information. For open rates, First, make sure you're reaching the right audience through segmentation. Also, consider your send time. You may be sending to the right segment, but perhaps your timing is off and it's buried in most inboxes during the workday. Lastly, try A-B testing your subject lines to see further improvement. For click rates, definitely look into testing new content within your email. Perhaps the layout of the email is confusing or the call to action isn't apparent. Perhaps there is excessive scrolling or an overwhelming amount of content. Make use of the A-B testing feature for clicks and try out some different options within the email content. Maybe simply it's just not a compelling offer within the email. You might try including some form of incentive, be it an actual discount or establishing another value proposition or even appealing to the fear of missing out. Making sure you're providing some compelling value will help increase click rates. Lastly, ensure that your subject lines are in line with the content of the email. If there's a mismatch in expectation, you might have subscribers reacting negatively, as we already noted on spam complaints and unsubscribes. In order to see increases in revenue, much of this may have to do outside of email and pertains to your website. Make sure you have a streamlined user experience that allows users to seamlessly flow through checkout. Of course, 
you're going to want to make sure that where you're linking on the site makes sense. Ensure that you don't make the user have to work to find the relevant product or content on your site. Lastly, make sure you're emailing profiles that are segmented properly. The more targeted and specialized your messaging is within the customer journey, the better results you'll see in terms of opens, clicks, and revenue. In this lesson, we covered the multitude of ways Klaviyo provides you performance metrics on your account. You can have high-level snapshots on your account dashboard performance tab, as well as some more tailored information in your analytics tab. You can also find overview reports within the respective sections for your signup forms, flows, and campaigns. Within your analytics section, you can dig deeper into generating custom reports or see how you're performing relative to your peer group within benchmarks. Lastly, we discussed some clear, actionable ways to improve your account performance. In our next lesson, we'll be discussing how to put all that we've learned together to prepare for a successful Black Friday and beyond. <music>